52 is entitled Parametric Surfaces. Suppose we were given that R of UV is equal to UI plus VJ plus V over 2K. And we want to find the rectangular equation for this surface by eliminating the parameters u and v. Okay. Well, that's x. That's x of u v. x of u v is just u. And this right here is y. y or u v is just v. So, x is, excuse me, so u is x and v is y. Now, what about v over 2? Well, v is y, so v over 2 would be y over 2. And what we now have is r as a function of x and y. U has the translations. U is x. Xi plus V. V is J, Y. V is Y. J plus V over 2. Which is Y over 2. K. So I wrote R as a function of just x and y. That's rectangular. Okay, let's try another one. We're given R as a function of U and V, and we want to write R as a function of X and Y. Suppose that R of U, V is nothing more than 2 cosine U, V, 2 sine U. 2 sine u. You want to write this in x's and y's. Well, this is x. And this is y. And this I write in terms of x and y. So x is equal to 2 cosine of u. And y is v. So this immediately tells me what v is. v is y. Now, I want to know what u is. One in a nice way. Well, let me think. Okay, I mean, basically, in terms of r of x, y, the first pieces are easy. That's x. That's y. Now, I just need to find out how to say z. This equation right here tells me, dividing both sides by 2, cosine of u is x over 2. I divided both sides by 2. So, this gives me a triangle. Qu problem is, is I don't know what quadrant this is in. But, okay, a a and this here is z. z is equal to, z is equal to 2 sine of u. If I square both sides of the z equation, I get z squared is equal to 4 sine squared u. If I square both sides of the second equation, 
x equals 2 cosine u. If I square both sides, I get this. If I add these two equations, the left side is x squared plus z squared. The right side is 4. The right side is 4. Okay, so now, hmm. Hmm. Well, let's just look at this more closely. See, I, mean, I know that z squared is 4 minus x squared, so z can be plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x squared. Now, the thing is, I don't want to put that right here because it has two values. Okay, th th that's it nonetheless. Every time you have 3, 4, 11, you also have 3, 4, negative 11. That is the last component is going to be plus or minus. It's going to have two values. Like if x is 0, y is 7, z would be plus or minus 2. 4 minus 0 squared is 4, square root of 4 is 2 plus minus 2. It would contain 0, 0, 2 and 0, 0, negative 2. So I did get it. That there it is. Right above what I just erased. That's R of x, y. Now, you may say, well, what does it look like? What does it look like? Well, we have these three values. I mean, that's what they gave us. That was the x, that was the i component, the j component, and the k component. x, y, and z. Now, the first and the third one. The first and the third. These two. They happen to tell us that x squared plus z squared equals 4. And y can be anything. And y can be anything. The first component didn't depend upon v, nor did the third component. v or y can be anything. So, if somebody asked you to describe the surface, somebody said to you, please describe the surface, please, you would say it circles in the x, z plane of radius 2. And y can be anything. So, if this is y and this is x and z. No, I'd actually rather it be the conventional way. x, y, and z. Well, you keep having circles in the x, z plane. And the y value can keep changing. It's just a cylinder. It's just a cylinder. Okay, and of course, I can't think of a reason why the y values couldn't be negative. This would be z on the top, I mean 2 on the top, and here in the z axis would be negative 2. Same thing on x. 2 
and negative 2. So if you have R given as a parameter of T, you can convert it out to rectangular. It's pretty neat. you're going to see the exact same thing below it. It's just a mirror image across about you know, across the z-axis. The mirror image between positive z and negative z. If something goes up like this, it has to come down as well. Well, what I mean to say is if that's R, that would be S. That would be an S. If you have this piece in R, you would have the mirror image in S. It would look like the mirror image. Okay, so that's the answer to the question. What's the difference between R and S? What if you were told that R of UV is equal to U cosine V U sine V U squared? And when it came to S of UV, that portion was exactly the same. 
that is it's the same function but when it comes to you when it comes to R I'm meant to say u is between 0 and 2 and v is in between 0 and 2 pi for v excuse me for s u is in between 0 and 3 and v didn't change so 2 pi excuse me so the difference between r and s is right here in r u goes between u 0 and 2 in s it goes between 0 and 3 so how is that affecting things well first thing you should notice is that x squared plus y squared is u squared remember this is x and that's y in both equations, R and S, you get x squared plus y squared equals u squared. But when you square x, you get u squared cosine squared v plus, and when you square y, you get u squared sine squared v. This is x squared plus y squared. But you can factor out a u squared and what's left over is cosine squared v plus sine squared v. What's in the brackets is 1. u squared times 1 is u squared. And z, z equals u squared. Well, if this and that both equal u squared, that means x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. That's what that means. R and S are both equivalent to x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Remember, 
that z equals u squared. We've always said that. I mean, it says it right here. The third component equals u squared. z equals u squared. Okay. Well, when it comes to r, you know that u is in between 0 and 2. If you square both sides, then u squared is in between 0 and 4. But u squared is z. That is, z just goes up to 4, which is exactly what I drew over here. You remember, I said that mark up here was 4. This mark is 4. That is, I went up 4. Now, when it comes to S, they tell me that U is between 0 and 3. So, if I just happen to square all three sides, I would get that U squared is in between 0 and 9. But U squared is Z. So, Z is, Z can go higher. Here's the difference. Z can go higher. It then just have to go up to 4. Z can go up to 9 now. And you just get a circle up there of radius 3. You get that and everything below. And that's the difference. The difference is everything above here. This point and this point and this point these are all extras. Everything above z equals 4. Everything to the left of that curly bracket that I just drew. Everything in there. That's the difference. z now can go up to 9. In s, z can go up to 9. And in r, z can only go up to 4. That's the difference. So we want to find a vector valued function for this plane. The plane z is equal to y. So we want a vector value function. So R of U V is equal to one component followed by another followed by another. The Y and the Z, they're equal. You can call them Z. You could have said U if you preferred. And the first component has nothing to do with Y's and Z's. So I'll just call that U. And there's one answer. And that problem is done. Suppose you are given the cylinder. You are given the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Excuse me, is equal to 16. You're given that. It's a cylinder. It has three dimensions. Z can be anything. Z can be anything. In the XY plane, you have a circle of radius 4, because that's R squared. So R would be 4. And you can go up. You can go up. Z can be anything. X squared plus Y squared must equal 16. But Z can be anything. This point right here, it can be 3 square root of 7, anything. But X squared, which is 9, plus Y squared, which is 7, better equal 16. And it does. But Z can be anything. And of course, it can go down. 
So there's there, there's even a graph of the of this plane of the cylinder, and I was able to write it parametrically using the parameters u and v. Circle, but I, of radius three, three. 
So I'm just going to let u equal, excuse me, the x value equals 3 cosine u and the y value say equals 3 sine u. After all, if I square the x value, I get 9. So x squared is equal to 9 cosine squared u. And if I square the y, and if I square y, I get 9 sine squared u. And if I add them up, I get what I'm supposed to. That's why it works. Yeah, circle. You should use parameters like the cosine v and sine u. Cosine v and sine v. Okay, but nonetheless, they are there. V, Z squared is going to be this squared 
this squared. I can factor it out of what I'm saying. You have u over 2 squared times cosine squared v. This product is this squared right here. Plus, I factor out the u over 2 squared. But what's in here is 1. So we got u squared, u over 2 squared. We get u over 2 squared. Okay. And that's what we were supposed to get. But if this is x over, what we're, what we're supposed to get is x over 2 squared. So if I just let x and u be equal, then they're the same. And that's what I did. I let x and u be equal. You want to get u squared, or excuse me, x over 2 squared. You want to get x over 2 squared. Well then, how about just try u over 2. Let x just be u. Because then when you square, you go, when you square the y and the z, you will get the u over 2 squared. You have to see it coming. Now we want to find an equation of the tangent plane to the surface that I'm about to give you by the vector value function at the given point. So, all we're given is that r of u is equal to the component vector u plus v. You take away v. V. And the point of interest is, me, is 1, negative 1, 1. We want to find an equation of the tangent plane to this surface. At that point. Okay, well... What we want to find is the it's a partial. R e sub u. The partial of that with respect to u is one. With respect to that is one. With respect to that is zero. Remember one u, one u. The derivative is one plus or minus the derivative of v is zero when we take the derivative with respect to u. Okay, now r v. Here we're going to get the 1. Here we're going to get negative 1. And here we get 1. Now, what happens at 1, negative 1, 1. What happened here?
Okay. So u plus v should equal 1. That happens when u is 0. Let's make sure it works in this line. If u minus v is negative 1, then u should be 0. Okay, so we now know u is 0 and v is 0. What you want to find out is ru. So ru is a function of u and v. Turns out that the derivatives were all constants, but it's still nonetheless a constant function of u and v. So what is r u of u v? u being 0 and v being 1. Well, when u is 0 and v is 1, this is 1, 1, 0. It didn't change. 1, 1, 0. And r v of 0, 1 well, it doesn't care what u and v are. It's 1, negative 1, 1. It's coincidental that it didn't care. Now what you need to do is find the normal plane. You need to take the cross product. would equal to R U cross R V. Actually R U of 0, 1, R V at 0, 1. And if you work this out, what you'll get is this. Just compute the determinant. You will get 1, negative 1, negative 2. And then you can write down the equation of the tangent plane. Equation of the tangent plane. It is 1 times x minus the x value of the point, which is 1. The y component times y minus the y value, which makes it plus 1. Minus 2 times z minus the z value, which is 1, equals 0. And you can clean this off like 1x minus 1y minus 2z equals negative 1, so when I bring it to the right side is plus 1, negative 1, when I bring it to the right it's plus 1, positive 2, when I bring it to the right side it becomes negative 2. So it's just x minus y minus 2z equals this, which is 0. So there it is. Find R U, find R V, but you have to find it at the correct point. You have to translate that point X Y Z. I think it's one negative one one. You have to convert it to U V points. So, 
the first component. It has there's some UV combination that will make it equal to zero. And there's a UV combination, that same UV combination would make this equal to six. And U squared would equal to four. So two U cosine V must equal zero. But we know that U doesn't equal zero. We know that U squared is four. So U is plus or minus two. So two times positive two or negative two times this. If it's zero, it's not the two nor the positive or negative two that equals zero. It's the cosine V that equals zero. Cosine V equals zero. Well, that implies that V is pi over two. So now we know what V is. So maybe we can find out what U is. We can find out if it's positive or negative two. Well, we know three U sine V must be six. Three U sine V must be six. But we know what V is. So three U sine pi over two must be six. The sine of pi over two is one. Okay, so this is one. So now we know 3u times 1 is 3u, which equals 6. So now we know that u is exactly 2. So the point 0, 6, 4, this becomes u, which is 2, v, which is pi over 2. v was pi over 2, and u was equal to 2. Okay, let me erase a lot of this, please. did was just find out the UV point. Okay, now we have to find the partials of R of UV. Partial with respect to U. That means the 2 and the cosine V are constants. Times the derivative of U, which is 1. Constant times 1 is just a constant. Same thing in the next component. This 3 times sine v is a constant times the derivative of u, which is 1. 3 sine v times 1 is 3 sine v. With respect to u, derivative of u squared is 2u. Okay, now what is r sub v of uv? Well, here, the 2u is a constant times the derivative of cosine of v is negative sine v. 3u is a constant times the derivative of sine of v is cosine of v. And the partial of u squared with respect to v is zero. But this isn't enough. You want to find u r sub u at our at our point two comma pi over two. Well, you get two times cosine of pi over two. The cosine of pi over two is zero, so it's zero. Three times the sine of pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. 3 times 1 is 3. Comma, 2 times u. u is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. R sub v at that same point. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 times the sine of pi over 2, which is 1. Negative 4 times 1, negative 4. 
negative 3 times 2 is 6 times the cosine of power over 2. The cosine of power over 2 is 0. 6 times 0 is 0. The third component is always 0. Okay, here I can calculate a cross product. I can find a cross product, which will be normal to our plane. So n is equal to r u of 2 pi over 2 cross r v at 2 pi over 2 over 2. That is the cross product of those two vectors. If you worked it out, you would get 0, negative 16, 12. So then, the equation the equation of the tangent plane would be 0 times x minus the x value of the given point, which was 0, plus negative 16 or minus 16 times y minus the y value of the given point which was 6 plus 12 times z minus the z value, which is 4 of the given point, equals 0. So this is 0. You have negative 16y plus 12z. This is negative, excuse me, positive 96. You bring it to the other side, it's negative 96. This is negative 48. You bring it to the other side, it becomes positive 48. So this whole mess is negative 48. Let me finish up right here. I'm just copying down. The largest number that goes into all three of those numbers, 16, 12, and 48, is 4. Since there's two negative signs, that is 3, I'm going to divide by negative 4. This way I'll get more positives than negative. This is 4y. Positive over negative is negative. 12 over 4 is 3. 3z equals positive. So now I only have one negative sign. 4y minus 3z equals 12. That is the equation of the tangent plane. Suppose we want to find the area of this surface over this region. The area of the surface, R of UV, is 2U negative V over 2, positive V over 2. And U goes between 0 and 2, and V goes between 0 and 1. We want to find the area of the surface over the specific region. Now, R sub U of UV the partial of this with respect to u, which is 2, partial of this with respect to u, which is 0, there are no u's, 
partial of u. There are no u's. It's zero. Now, Rv of uv, the partial of R with respect to v, well, 2u has no v's in it. Derivative is zero. Negative v over 2 is negative a half v. So, the derivative is the constant. Same thing for v over 2. This is half times v. The derivative will be 1 half. And the whole thing is that we want, we want to find the lengths of r u cross r v. So first let's find r u cross r v. It turns out that it is 0, negative 1, negative 1. Just cross it. We've done lots of these. So the lengths will be 0 squared plus negative 1 squared plus negative 1 squared square root. This is 0, this is 1, this is 1. 0 plus 1 plus 1 is 2. The length is the square root of 2. So the area is equal to the double integral of that magnitude, the magnitude of the cross product, square root of 2 times du dv. And we know that u goes between 0 and 2 and v goes between 0 and 1. You can actually look at it. u v, u goes between 0 and 1 and v goes between 0 and 2. So you get this area. Get square root of 2 times that area. But that area is 1 by 2. That area is 2. You can factor this out times 2. The answer is 2 square root of 2. Or you can actually integrate. The sum integrals, they come from obvious areas or obvious figures. Figures that we know the area of. Like rectangles and triangles. Somebody asked you for the integral of 2x dx dy with a double integral 0, 1, 0, 2 or say 0, 3, 0, 6. Y is equal to 2x. That's this line. And x, for example, goes from 0 to 3. And it turns out that if y is equal to 2x, when x is 3, y is 2 times 3. y is 6. And down here, where it starts, y is 0. So yeah, y goes from 0 to 6. It's just a triangle. Drawing half of as much as I did, I mean, all I know is this. I know that y equals 2x is a line from 0 to 3, and they tell me y goes from 0 to 6. So the base is 3, the height is 6, the area is half, 3 times 6. Half for 6 is 3 times 3. The area is 9. That's 9. You want to integrate a double integral? Okay. But you'll get 9. Me, I'd rather do triangles. Okay, this 
problem, they want the same thing. Find the area of the surface over the region that I'm about to give you. So R of U V is equal to 5 U cosine V 5 U sine V U. And U goes between 0 and 4 and V goes between 0 and pi over 2. It doesn't go all the way to 2 pi. So, R sub U is 5 times cosine V is a constant, times the derivative of U is 1, so it's just 5 cosine V. Same thing in the second component. It's just 5 sine V, and the partial of U with respect to U is 1. R sub V is, so 5 U is the constant times the derivative of cosine of V, 5 U is the constant, excuse me, times the derivative of cosine V is negative sine V. Same thing over here. 5u is the constant times the derivative of cosine of v, which is cosine of v. The derivative of u with respect to v is not 1, excuse me, but 0. And if you took the cross product, if you bother to find the cross product, if somebody is nice enough to give me, we know it's negative 5u cosine v, negative 5u sine v, 25u. Now, I don't really care what the cross product is. I care about the length of the cross product. If the only reason I'm doing all of this just to find the length of the cross product. Why? Because the area, the area is going to equal to this number dA over the area. Now, what is this number? Well, you square this. You get 25 u squared cosine squared v plus you square this. You get negative 5 squared times u squared times sine squared u plus twenty five squared u squared. Okay. Let's clean this up as much as we can. Twenty five u squared times this plus twenty five u squared times that you can factor out the 25 u squared. And what's left over is cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. That is, it's just 25 u squared plus 25 squared u squared. What we can factor out from that is 25 u squared. Here is times 1. So I factored out 25 u squared. I have 1 left plus factored out one of the 25's and both of the u squares. So I have a 25 left over. Okay. 1 plus 25 is 26. The square root of u squared is u. 
I'll excuse you. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of u squared is u. This, of course, is 26. And the square root of 26, I don't know. So that's the length. Not the friendliest looking length, but nonetheless, that's what it is. So now we need to write up the integral. Everything I'm erasing except the last line. I need that number. So it's the integral, and we have to have 5u square root of 26. du dv. Now what does u go from? What does v go from? Well, they told us. u goes from 0 to 4, and v goes from 0 to pi over 2. And you just do this. Is the in, innermost one first. First, I would pull out the constant 5 square root of 26. The integral of u du is u squared over 2 from 0 to 4. 0 to pi over 2 dv. 5 squared 26. Now, this here, you plug in 4. 4 squared is 16, divided by 2 is 8. So you just get 8 dv from 0 to pi over 2. But the 8 is a constant. So, the 8 can come out in front. 8 times 5 happens to be 40. So we have 40 square root of 26. Integral of dv is just v from 0 to pi over 2. That part, this will be pi over 2. So you have 40 square root of 26, excuse me, times pi over 2. Well, 2 goes into 40 20 times. So you have 20 pi, 20 times pi times the square root of 26. And there's your answer. to find the length of that cross product in order to multiply the area by the right number, the right scale. Okay, that finishes up this section.